I think people don't realize that if they have a file editor inside their website and it gets hacked, someone could put on their homepage anything that they want, and it will be very hard to find and remove. So you're talking like you'll have something very bad on your homepage for a while if it gets hacked that way. And I, I think that's kind of the one of the main things that a lot of people need to understand is the the plugins themselves matter. And the ones you pick matter. And I think, you know, making sure that they're always up to date and ensuring that you're don't have functionality overlapping each other because that can cause issues. Making sure plugins are compatible with each other and testing them properly. Did you test the plugin before you installed? Because it says it doesn't do this. But even if it said it didn't do it, did you actually install it in a testing area and test it? Because even though I said it doesn't do it in the directions, you still installed it on your live site and then complained that it was a problem, even though we stated it was not, it doesn't do the fu the functionality that you want. Yeah. And it's amazing people just click install and it's like, yeah, like you, I don't even think you do that with a Shopify site. So like you want, if you, even when you sh install a Shopify app, I think you want to test it first on your site. What's your thought on that? Yeah, it goes for any environment, really. Uh, you know, the, the Shopify apps, tend to be way less invasive because it's all SaaS driven, right? Uh, so you yeah. get very little customization. So it's fairly easy to stage a app on Shopify um, simply because yeah. you can just uh, replicate the theme and then just inject your code for the app into that theme and, and test it from there. For, for the most part, it doesn't apply to every plugin. Yeah. WordPress is a way more open environment, right? So that means people yeah. can do more, which means people can break more. Uh, so there's the downside there. 